Well, the big advantage President Obama has is that he is already immensely popular in Europe, and that includes the United Kingdom. His popularity will not have decreased by his increased level of support in the military sense for Afghanistan. What he needs to do, like all leaders, is he needs to deliver on the promise that he, that he generates and the expectations. But our responsibility, because we welcome his election with that renewed engagement in foreign policy terms, our responsibility is to ensure that the inevitable disappointments, and there will be some, don't undermine the promise of his uh, election. So we need to support him. That's the point I'm making today, and that was the point that his vice president was making in security terms to the countries of Europe. You know, we will do more, but we will expect you to do more as well to support them. I think, as far as Afghanistan is concerned, you know, what we need to do is recognise that Russia, China, Pakistan, India, Iran, to name some, and not exhaustively, of the countries of the region, have an interest in, um, um, in the stabilisation of Afghanistan. They are already involved, and we just need to engage them. We need to be much better, actually, at engaging each other in our discussions about this policy. This, it's far too bitty and not nearly comprehensively well enough left. As far as Iraq is concerned, I think there is now a consensus that we have reached the stage where the Iraq's own ability to provide security and governance for their country is such that we can begin to start drawing down our troops. You know, the troops who were sent there from the Serbs, the American troops, will come home. We will draw our troops down in the south where there's a greater degree of stability. And progressively, I think, and and, and, and in an accelerating fashion, we will see a drawdown of troops. And there seems to be a consensus emerging round about a date about 2011, and I don't think there's any dispute about that anymore.